Justice League and I play Detective Cutter. I'm the main guy. No, 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 no. Uh, that's Christian Walker, although I did dress up as him for Halloween. <laughs> Check my Instagram. <laughs> um, my name is Aaron Farber and I play Simons. All of them. Thank you. I am Alicia Rowling and I play Costa. That's cool. Is that how you say your last name? Yeah. Say it again. Rowling. But in English, it's Alicia Rowling. It's not as romantic, but it's fine. That's cool. Should I do mine again? My name is Aaron. I'm Logan Browning and I play Zora. To replicate, that'd be nice. Cause I, I, as a woman, I feel like you re replicate daily and do 40 things at the same time. Um, I think I probably, no offense, Simon, I would choose Zora because. Like purple jello shot? I kind of do. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane that you can just like lift cars <laughs> um, or annoying dogs that bark at you when you walk down the street. Like, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I would have your head. A little unpractical. Sorry, Simon. It's been an incredible blast. It's been so much fun. I mean, it doesn't follow the the comic book per se, like per comic. Obviously, we've done just stuff since it's a completely different form of art, you know, versus uh, a comic book, which is very visionary. You know, so you pages, it's very tangible to TV, but you make it kind of fun. And the storyline changes a little bit, but it's been a blast. And I will speak for all of us. <laughs> wonderful job, but also to be part of such an interesting you know, fan base right? in, a, in, a, in a market like right? WonderCon. Like, you can't get better than this as an actor. It's awesome. Well, yeah, the comic is, I mean, the comic's edgy. The comic is, is rated R and bloody, and I think that was, pro that was the coolest part about it being on PlayStation is, you know, everyone gets to do and say and, and have the blood and the guts and the illicit content. Um, yeah, I, I think if anything, that's probably how the comic, the, the graphic novel, and the series mirror each other. Because other than that, you know, all the characters are, they kind of get to blossom in different ways that you don't see in the comic. Yeah. I think even with that, though, they uh, handle it in a very real way, where they don't push nudity and these things just for effect, but they do it appropriately to, to make it real and tell the story that they wanted to tell, which I think is awesome. Because obviously superheroes are so big in popular culture right now, and you know, if, if you haven't seen the show or not familiar with the comic, you'd think, oh, it's just it's just another one of those. But since you have seen the show and you have read the comic, that you you know that what's different about our world is is that sort of having powers is almost like having like green eyes, right? It's rare, but there's a lot of people in the world that have it. It's not like just four guys. This one, right? Oh, where did I get that one right? It's not like four people. Like, there's not like su Superman and Spider-Man. Like, these four guys, and they're sort of invulnerable to age and to everything else, or to alcoholism, or whatever. You know, these heroes, I think we can relate to because they are more human. And if you become more human and this sort of, uh, instead of this perfected idea of what a hero is, I think we as, as humans uh, relate to it more. And I think that's actually a story that needs to be told uh, in, in, in a big market that has all these superhero um, sort of content out there. Right? What, what I love kind of about that is, is if this were real, the real world, you know, there are protocols. You can't just arrest someone because they're, if they haven't showed the full degree of what their power is, you know, there's all these protocols that they have to go through, and yet uh, it, it's a dangerous situation because we can't fully control them. Now, of course, once the drainer is introduced in the, uh, you know, 56th episode, it does finally uh, give us a little more power, you know, make things a little more equal. Um, but I think when Christian Walker was, was brought onto the division, and we talk a lot about this, it finally gave the powers division a little uh, clout, because before that, who are we kidding, right? <laughs> we, we, we can put... Um, you know, we could put handcuffs on a guy, but if he can break out of them, you know, it's, it's not really going to do us any good. Yeah, if Simon multiplies, then he, you know, half of them gets away. You know, it's it's crazy. So I think as as the story continues, it's it's, it's really interesting to see how the humans operate sort of with the meta humans and 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 still but playing by the rules of whatever that is. It's still happening. Yeah. 
the next season two. <laughs> <laughs> will be much clearer. Um, that's true. I do. You, I, well, I feel like when I'm watching the show, I feel like I understand more about Mike. It's weird, like seeing it with everything else. I feel like I'm able to understand her more personally. We we shot um, in a relatively slower, I think, pace than most shows. Like we had more time, and but we did have so many different worlds all meshing together, and a lot of us are new to the comic book world. Thing. So we didn't really have much prep time, nor did like PlayStation Sony. They didn't really want us to read the comic books too much because then it confuses you or you're like, wait, my character doesn't do that. But So it is fresh and it is new. And I think even when we did Comic-Con in New York, it was like two episodes into shooting. Logan and I were like, and then we had the same question, like, what are your characters? We're like, we're trying to figure them out. And as an actor, you do the best that you can. You build, you know, a backstory and a history. But when there are oh, kind of already is one for you, you just have to keep layering, and I think that's the fun part, and you get to do that on set. Um, but it, like Logan said, it is being like watching it now. We're all just as excited as the fans and like or any viewer. Cause we're like, oh my gosh, oh yeah, I did that choice. Oh, it does make sense, and you get more and more excited. I think that's why we've been talking about like if and when we get season two, you want to you know propel forward. You want to move on those like, initial steps that you took in season one. You're like, oh, cause I was right. That that feels natural. So it's just really exciting. Yeah. As far as Simon's goes, it, I mean, it took a long time because figuring out that relationship with himself and what that looked like and how conversations took place. Are we telepathic? No, we're not. It's more like we're a group of schoolboys that go out and do their thing and then you come back and you talk about what happened and then it's like, well, you didn't follow the rules, you did. And, um, that was a fun universe to unfold and talk through that with Charlie and, and really decide on what this character was or, or wasn't as far as his powers. I mean, think of a group of friends that go out and do their thing, they come back and talk. Well, we don't need to talk because now I see their memories. So I know what has happened, um, but I wasn't there. I'm not in their ear when I'm out on a mission to do it. We have a question. Do you think that you feel their pain? Like, you know, one of the Simons died. Do you physically feel that? Do you, like, um, do you know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It, it doesn't kill me, but there is a moment in Six when you see the reabsorption of one of me and there is that um, look. And we shot that a few different ways, and we didn't play it up in this huge way, uh, the, the, in the way that it was um, released. But but yes, that that was something that we talked about. What, what's going on with Wolf? I mean, you caught, he got away, he got caught again. How do you keep the beast like that caged up for very long? <laughs> I think that's the question on everyone's mind. Like, how do you keep this thing, this you know, vast amount of energy, under control? It's like an atomic bomb slash nuclear like, plant that has a leak. You're like, uh, uh you kind of bandage what you can. And I'm not sure. I think it will represent something else for each individual character. For me, it's like the worst idea of power, but yet it's a little intoxicating. I don't feel like Pliss is scared of Wolf as much as she is like in awe that he exists. And yeah, there's fear wrapped up in, in just like marble, basically, of this thing that can destroy the planet and everyone with just desire to do so. And for someone that craves power so much and craves control so much, to know that they're, that that is ultimate and it's alive and can get out right now, it's just like, it freezes you. What the scariest thing for us in the powers division uh, is is what he's doing right now what was shown in episode six is is that now he's getting out there and putting a public face to this sort of power drainer scenario and I know for cutter like it's extremely frustrating because as, as any sort of police officer or anybody else will will tell you um, it, it, sometimes it's easy to catch the bad guy it's harder to put them away because of all the red tape and so with you know it would have been easier if we could have just taken him out while he had escaped right um, but now he's out there and he's we have such a cop it's not <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Like, it's hard to put him away it's so cop let me tell you let me tell you something so, still a character yeah. um, well, my dad was a police officer. He was a detective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I know all about that red tape. <laughs> okay, Alicia just said that we all have completely different 
perspectives and relationships with Wolf, and it's so true. Yeah. I mean, for Zora, it's she she thinks she could. I mean, what That's crazy person? What person thinks she can take a a, a flesh eating <laughs> monster? Like, why does she think she can take him? And it's 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 one of those. I think it's that um that childlike syndrome where you have no fear when you're a kid. And you're like, I can do anything. Yeah, I was born for this. I got this in the bag. It's like, <laughs> Sorry, we got excited. Enough about that red tape, boss. <laughs> anyway, I'll show you red so tape. So there's red tape. Sorry, <laughs> 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 I used to call myself the Clash. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> um, I think the best answer to this question is not my answer. Uh, Wolf gave me this answer one day when we were having... Um, dinner. Eddie is dinner and I we just went out to dinner and I was like, what do you know? What do you think about Calista? This is like episode one and we're still trying to figure out our relationship and um, he's like, no, you're the audience. I was like, oh. He's like, your character is the audience. You get to bounce between all of these little groups and open little doors and everyone gets to see it, but you're not really connected to any of it. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much because that was the answer I was looking for and um, I think that's what it Calista is. She doesn't belong anywhere. And a lot of us, as we grow and mature, um, we're constantly going to different groups and different circles in our life, right? Ideally, to try to find ourselves. And But the truth of it is, you're always alone, and you have to be okay with it. And that's something that Calista hasn't learned yet. Um, and she's in the journey of that. So it's been, I think, a very bumpy road for Calista to go and kind of see the cops and kind of be in Johnny's and Simon's world, but it's a little too dark and Retro Girl rejects me basically, so that's not it. And that fame, although it looks appealing, now I see that it's, it's very gilded. And obviously Zora's not my pal. <laughs> <laughs> and the wannabe kids have nothing to do with me. Um, so it has been a bumpy but very educational road. And I think that now that we're almost, you know, episode seven, it's made Calista so strong and incredibly um, task-oriented, I guess. And not that she manipulates in with bad intentions. I think she does manipulate in situations, but in, to, to survive. And you can't, I don't, I don't really judge survival in a negative way. Like, well, she doesn't know any better. She's trying. But it is a very um, twisted turn for her. Lots of Good time. answer. <laughs> And I learned a lot just now. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Hey. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I, I worked on um, a episode or two of Grimm and got eaten by a uh, creature. <laughs> um, was playing an FBI guy. So I was, I, but the, like, yes, it was, it was, I wasn't the one in the screen, screen suit. What you mean that? Um, <laughs> they didn't pay for Green. my vote that time. Back to the red tape. I have a, I have a small sci-fi background, but I've never played. I, I was in the Secret Circle. I'm um, Kevin Williamson. Uh, oh, yeah. I was going out for one of the witches, and um, just things changed, and so I ended up going back and played the only um, mere mortal on the show, which actually ended up being way more fun playing Immortal with all the all the witches because I have this, like, they have this secret they're keeping from me, and I'm like, I think you guys might be doing something weird in high school, like, what? so that was cool, and I mean, Kevin Williamson is just dope in general, I love everything he does.